gentlemen, you are tuned in to the J Moore Tech Talk Show, and we'll be starting momentarily. This is the place to ask those questions about PCs, technology, challenges with your iPhone, perhaps pairing it to your car, or maybe those smart devices that are supposed to make life easier at home or in the office, but just don't seem to. And now, please help me welcome the CEO and founder of the J Moore Connection Incorporated and the star of tonight's show, Mr. John C. Morley. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the J. Moore Tech Talk Show, right here on the Starcom Radio Network, Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern to 9.57 p.m. Eastern. If you miss any of our shows, you can just walk on over to jmor.com, and then under the social menu, click on where it says J. Moore Radio, and you will see the option there to actually get the um, Listen to Previous Shows link. And you will also get the uh, suggested books and audio about each show. Now, um, what we try to do is usually put them up right around the show or we blog it right after the show. Uh, the last show was Where is AI Going? And right after the show, we'll be putting up the um, supporting, um, let's say, information that you can uh, choose to download or books that you may want to purchase, but just some ideas that will help you, um, let's say, probe a little deeper into what we've been discussing. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are going to talk about a little more about technology. And there was a particular bank, I'm not sure if you remember it, uh, it was earlier this week, and this one bank, I thought they were doing something very interesting. Uh, I'm not going to mention the name of the bank, but they decided that they were going to, in their infinite wisdom, I guess to try to save money, which is a little bit crazy, um, but they decided to install sensors, heat sensors, to see which bankers are at their desks. Now, it was a, the London Bank had installed devices that show when desks are unoccupied and how often uh, that they are used. So it was very interesting. Uh, they installed these devices to track how often bankers are at their desks, and managers um, were getting all these uh, queries, uh, you know, when investment bank staff uh, was discovered in London about these black boxes that were stuck under the side of their desks. What are they? What are they going to do? What's the purpose of them? And uh, the employees asked uh, not to be identified speaking about their workplace, so they really didn't want to comment directly, so we couldn't get any of them actually – uh, to make a statement or to actually uh, submit anything in audio or um, in any kind of video or just, um, like I said, a written statement for that matter. So there was a phased rollout of these devices at the bank, and um, the whole idea was that they were going to be notified before they were installed. But the bank did not send out any memos that this was even happening. So this was kind of like, you know, getting hit below the belt. And I don't know about you, but I think, you know, when you're working at a job and an employer does something that is, let's say, below the belt, okay, or even just, almost just below the belt, you start to wonder about that employer and wonder, you know, why am I here and do they really appreciate me? I mean, I think that's really what a lot of us are, are talking about. And um, this particular bank said that they didn't remember being informed about the boxes. But the spokespeople for the bank said that they have no official human resource complaints about it. I mean, they tried to soften it. It was on LinkedIn. It was on a whole bunch of different websites. And the devices um, were made by Blackburn UK. Um, so I'm not sure if you know that company. But again, they're out, of, they're out of the United Kingdom. And I'm talking about this because this is just an example of how technology, I think, was pushed just a little bit uh, too far. So those of you who don't know, Blackburn is a large town in Lancaster, England. It lies just to the north of West Penn Moors on the south edge of the Ripple Valley. And it's about nine miles east of Preston or about 20.9 miles north, uh, north northwest, give or take uh, a few miles or so. So uh, the Blackburn uh, company was the company that uh, had made had made these. 
And again, they really didn't think um, that it was going to cause, I guess, so much of a concern as it did. But it did. And um, I guess what they tried to do is soften the blow a little bit. So this particular company um, pitched a way for companies to find out how they can reduce office space and provide a multicolored dashboard to actually illustrate to managers and to other executive team members which workstations are occupied and the ones that are analyzing um, uh, basically uh, certain resources, and then they could use usage trends to see what was happening. So these sensors, they claim were not monitoring people or their bro productivity. BS. If you're going to track whether someone's sitting at a desk or not, you're obviously monitoring whether they're being productive or not. Because if someone's not at their desk, then, you know, you're not able to say it's all about energy. That's all totally baloney. The bank said in a statement uh, that was received by an email, and I quote, this sort of analysis helps us to reduce costs. For example, managing energy consumption or identifying opportunities to further adopt flexible work environments. Bull, bull, bull. Okay? They knew what they were doing. They installed these particular devices not to really conserve energy. They installed these devices because they wanted to become big brother and get more control over their employees. You know, I have to tell you that whether you have a small company or have a large corporation, if you don't treat people right, you're going to have issues. Okay? And what I mean by that, some people, let's say, are treated very, very well. And when they go to do something that may be outside the lines, they're going to actually feel guilty about doing it. So they probably won't do it because you've been so good to them. However, when you treat an employee, I don't want to say disrespectful, but you basically try to put too many checks and balances on them, you annoy them and you also make that person think, well, you know, they're checking on me so much. What's a few extra minutes away from my desk going to mean? So they say the sensors aren't monitoring people, but I say bold to that. And they said that in an email statement. But again, that's all PR nonsense ploy, if you ask me. So they say it's going to appeal to cost-cutting strategies. This is what the uh, chief executive said of the bank. And he said that there's going to be a tremendous savings to be made by reducing the bank's real estate footprint. So um, in December, uh, this one particular office is going to sublet office space in London's Canary. It's a wharf district to the government. And they said they're going to save about 35 million pounds, or in United States dollars, it would be $45 million um, a year. So investment banks are starting to increase. They're obviously using technology more. They want to watch their staff. And this particular bank is very concerned about um, tracking people using a computer system so they can learn how much uh, they've earned from every client. So it allows bosses to determine how much time traders are, are analyzing things, how much salespeople uh, should be spending with customers. So they're going a little more further than just these little minor heat sensors. But... And I want to quote here, we were given assurance that the boxes did not monitor individuals or their performance. Again, I say BS to that. The national officer of the Dominic Cook said in a statement, and I quote, we'll keep a close eye on the situation and make sure the sensors are never used to spy on staff or as a means to measure productivity. Ah, uh, you know, this all sounds great. But I don't believe these people further than I can throw them. And, you know, by the time it does actually start to track people, guess what's going to happen? I'll tell you what's going to happen. It's going to be too late because it's going to be something that somebody's gotten so used to. And by the time they have a chance to fight it, they're going to have a, a very, very slim chance. So other banks, including 10 other major banks, have inquired about this particular uh, London bank. And um, they're using similar motion tracking devices. So again, these are infrared uh, sensing devices which are, have a motion tracking device. 
and they um, they call it Occupy. And the Occupy has actually a lot of has caused a lot of controversy. Uh, the Daily Telegraph uh, had removed the devices the same day they were installed after numerous complaints of staff and journalists about Big Brother style surveillance. And, and I have to agree. I, I think it definitely is an invasion of people's privacy. And the Occupy, um, it's a wireless workspace utilization sensor system. So what does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? They can very easily install it, okay? Now, the company that makes Occupy, okay, uh, has a website out there which is uh, actually, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's in the UK, in, in Barnfield House, UK, United Kingdom. And, uh, you know, they're saying that it's going to be a, a live space finder helping people to know where there aren't people so they can get people there to help people. Again, I think this is all a big bunch of nonsense, okay? Because not only are they tracking the spaces, but they're tracking the numbers of the spaces. What do we associate with numbers, ladies and gentlemen? People, employees. I know that Dave sits at spot 162. I know that Jan sits at spot 116. If they were concerned about just tracking space and heat, we wouldn't give a flying, well, this is a PG or a G show, we wouldn't give a flying hoot, I'm going to say, about what number. All we care about is what part of the building, the west wing, the east wing, but they're breaking it down to numbers. So they're saying if your company has 500 employees spread across five floors, um, they could find a free desk without having to be wasting a lot of time. I'm sorry. If you need to spend that much time to figure out where you are, you guys, like your company has other problems, okay? Most companies have a person that reports to the same desk and doesn't have to go find a desk to go park themselves at. So I think this is a real bunch of bull. So CAD Capture has now been providing a range of asset management services to both public and private sectors. And they're offering new consultancy, space planning, uh, measuring surveys, condition surveys, document scanning, CAD conversion, intelligent CAD upgrades, and data synchronization with AMP databases. So I know your next question is going to be, so, so what, what is uh, an AMP database? And, you know, that's actually an excellent question. It stands for Access Module Processor. It's a type of virtual processor used to manage a database, and it handles file tasks that manipulate disk uh, subsystems in multitasking, uh, usually parallel processing environments, such as Teradata databases. So now with things like Google Cloud and Google BigQuery, you combine all those technologies, ladies and gentlemen, and we very easily have a big brother watching our employees. Many investment banks in the United States, I'm not going to mention their name, but some pretty big ones out there, including a couple of the major big ones that also have credit cards. And um, they don't currently use any kind of desk monitoring, okay? But according to the people with the knowledge of typical bank uh, practices, they asked not to be identified speaking about personal matters. So these spokespeople were from four different firms. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? They all declined to comment. What does that say? What does that freaking say? Uh, I'm going to have a lot on our, on our site. Uh, and by the way, uh, to get to that page uh, about the stuff I recommend and to learn more about some of the things that we're not going to actually get to covering in the show, you can just go to social and you can go to where it says recommended tech gadgets, paperbacks, and audiobooks, and more under the social uh, menu there. If you did go to the J. Moore radio page, no problem. You can just go to where it says suggested books and audio about each show. So again, we have some real good ones, and they'll be posted about an hour after the show, and, and, and they're going to be really good. So a lot of United Kingdom peers, okay, banks, etc., are saying that they have no similar desk monitoring systems in place. The spokespeople for the lenders are saying, okay, and they were asked to comment, and guess what? They didn't immediately respond to requests for comment. 
So this one particular bank that's been putting themselves uh, in the limelight in a bad way, installing these sensors, says they've been trimming uh, its London space, aiming to save 100 million pounds a year. And I quote, it's important to keep office space, okay, working and working space under regular review. Okay, yeah, it's important to keep the, the workspace and the environment under review. We don't need to have, uh, you know, uh, 10, uh, let's say, um, floors when we only need three floors. Or we don't necessarily need to have five conference rooms when we need two. Or vice versa. So that's talking about space and utilization, okay, of the space. It's not talking about people. When we're starting to use these sensors, that's getting a lot more involved into where are the people in the building. If the company hires 5,000 people, they basically want to know where all those people are because guess what they could do very easily. If certain people are not back at their desk or if the system notices a person's away from their desk too long of a period of time, it's very easy for them to write an option that would automatically send a notification or a text message, ladies and gentlemen, to a manager, executive, or group of managers that would have to go research it, or to a help desk person that would have to send someone out there and verify or decide what has to be, or notify HR. I really see this as big brother watching, and I don't like it, ladies and gentlemen. I really, really don't like it. But stay right where you are. Hang tight. We'll be right back after this break. We're going to take a quick one, so stay there. Computers always slow at your home or office. Pop-ups always appearing. Setting up smart devices like your iPhone, thermostats, downloading apps, and much more. Mention code JRC001 and receive a PC tweak for only $49.99. New clients only, please. Visit JMOR.com now. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. If you just joined us tonight, you're listening to a great show, the J. Moore Tech Talk Show. We are live Thursday nights, 9 p.m. to 9.57 p.m., and then we are rebroadcasted in the morning at various times. Now, if you missed any of our show, you can just walk on over to jmor.com. Go ahead and hover over the social drop-down menu and go to Jmore Radio. And while you're there, you'll see um, right where you can tune in and listen to us live if we're on the air, or you can click on listen to previous shows, and that will bring you over, ladies and gentlemen, to our YouTube channel, where you can listen to shows from this year, last year, etc. And also, just a little below that, you're going to see something that says suggested books and audio about each show. Well, we're listening to your feedback, ladies and gentlemen. One of the things that we've been hearing is, John, we love the shows. We love the content. We just wish there was some more information where we could actually learn more about a particular topic and build a broader foundation. Because you remember what I've said before. When we have a great foundation, it's very easy for us to absorb new complementing knowledge. If we have a good house foundation when we're building a new structure, a hotel, a home, or what have you, and we build upon that, our homes going to be very stable. It'll last a long time. When we learn about something or put effort to learn something and create a base, a foundational base of knowledge, it's almost like us creating this great, uh, this great magnet. So the more that we build that foundation, the more that we can just take that item and it just kind of comes to it right to the magnet and we're able to... Um, Take it right into our brain. So it goes into our um, temporary storage, our short-term memory, and then later on it will commit to our long-term memory. But again, if you have to build your, your long-term knowledge up because you don't know about a particular product or a particular um, industry or technology, the more you build up your knowledge, the easier it's going to be for you to absorb more knowledge about that topic. So we are talking tonight about the J. Moore Tech Talk Show and about how this bank installed these sensors, which is just absolutely ridiculous. And later on in any show, you can always go to jmore.com on that same radio page. You can click on where it says uh, listen to previous shows, or you can actually go to social and go to J. Moore, uh, go to recommended tech gadgets, paper books, audio books, and more. 
the fourth link down. So again, uh, the links will be posted probably within an hour after the show. And this is a great place for you to get enrichment knowledge about our show. It's also where we'll feature any type of product that we recommend that's complimentary to the show. And I also want to make mention tonight, I'm really excited uh, because the Jaymore Connection has actually manufactured its first product. Um, we have made the Jaymore Power Bank. Uh, we're going to talk about it more probably on the next show. We just had our um, beta product um, manufactured that we specced and designed, and we're going to be putting our first order in next week for our first batch. But this is going to be an incredible new battery. How many of you take your cell phone? Maybe you take it to the beach. Maybe you take it out to a ball game. Uh, maybe you take it when you're walking. You take it everywhere, right? But what happens when your cell phone dies and... You're so addicted to all this media and all this social uh, interaction. What do you do? Oh, my gosh, I can't get my Facebook. I can't get my Twitter. I can't get my Pinterest. What do I do? <sighs> you need a battery for your phone. But, oh, I don't have one. The Jaymore Power Bank plugs right in there, tells you the volts, tells you the amperage. Really easy, really simple to use. And um, it's just a great device. And we have it in a nice little package, and it comes with a one-year warranty. So we'll have more information about that. And also, Jaymore is going to be manufacturing called the Jaymore Tech Gadgets. And we have a lot of great stuff that we're working on. I'm not going to share with you yet that's going to be coming out just before the holidays. So there's a lot of great things happening with Jaymore this year. You're listening to the Jaymore Tech Talk Show. We do air every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern to 9.57 p.m. We do have Jason. Uh, from a very well-known golf club in um, Florida. In, um, yes, in Florida, not far from Naples. Uh, actually, my golf pro. And he's going to be coming on the air very, very soon. And we're going to be talking about the technology that empowers golf courses to stay in the black and out of the red. That's going to be a real great show. Don't miss it. We'll let you know when that's coming. It's going to be coming soon. I'm just waiting to confirm the date with him, and then we're going to... Uh, go ahead and schedule that. So again, we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, technology, right? We're talking about technology. And this particular bank, I mean, let's face it, a lot of these Fortune 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, Fortune 1000 companies, what do they do? They do what's best to make them money and to cut resources. And I get it, ladies and gentlemen. I totally get it. Business is business. And if you do something and it offends someone, it's just business. But that doesn't mean you should be rude, and it doesn't mean that you should do something that's underhanded. I'm sorry, but installing these sensors in the manner in which they're installing them, it's just a crock what they're saying. They're going to be able to track people so easily, the way the grid and the way the software was written. I mean, what are they smoking? It's not just going to give you an area like an air conditioner or a control system. It's actually going to tell you what desk, and they're going to very easily be able to map the desk number to the person. And I can tell you that if that person, let's say, were to clock in um, with their time card when they come in or what have you, or they have a key access, keyless, keyless access system where they swipe their card and that links in, all they have to do now is they run their thing, and then it tells them maybe if it's red, that means that the person, um, let's say, is missing from their desk, okay? If it's green, they're there, okay? If it's yellow, well, that means that uh, maybe they stepped away from their desk. It's only been 15 minutes. So they can color code how long somebody's been away from the desk. But maybe if it's black, that means the person didn't come in for work today. So, you know, that's another issue, okay? But I just see so many Pandora's boxes opening and I know, Brian, we ran a couple minutes over. We've got to take a quick break, so stay right where you are. We'll be right back. This is fascinating stuff, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back after this quick break. The 
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You have tuned into the J Moore Tech Talk Show right here on the Starcom Radio Network. If you missed any of our shows, just go to jmor.com under social. You can click on J Moore Radio and then click on previously recorded shows, which will take you to our YouTube channel. And there's also a new link there, ladies and gentlemen, if you just joined us and you want to get more enriched. Uh, to learn about the stuff we're talking about or about the products we recommend. On the same page, you can click on suggested books and audio about each show. And uh, if you didn't want to go to the Jay Moore Radio Show page, you go right to social and just go right to recommended tech gadgets, paper book, facts, audiobooks, and more. So we have a lot happening there. So we're talking about how this wonderful bank, so let's say innocently, but they knew what they were doing. And let's face it. They claimed that these sensors, these heat sensors they put under the desks, were put there to help cut costs because of energy efficiency. And I say bull to that, okay? So this bank had installed these devices at their London headquarters to track how much time bankers spend at their desks. So the spokesperson for the bank said that these devices aren't meant to evaluate employees' performance. But their introduction has spooked members of rank and file, and uh, the story got linked to Bloomberg very, very quickly. So managers were really annoyed about this uh, because this came, this became a decision even above management, more on the executive level knew, and they were supposed to notify the people, and they didn't tell them. I mean, come on, what, what kind of nonsense is that? Now they said, and I quote, we were given assurances that the boxes – did not monitor individuals or their performance. Then why the frick are you putting numbers on them and then associating them with names? I mean, do you think we're stupid for crying out loud? I mean, really, people. So they install these sensors in, and it's Big Brother's watching to see if they can replace you with a robot. I think that's where we're going. I mean, that even came from one of the people that actually made a comment actually on the 20th of August. They're trying to see if they can replace you with another employee or maybe they can replace you with a robot. We already saw it, ladies and gentlemen, last week with um, – I was talking about Amelia, and I won't get into that this time. But we have a lot of great stuff on our site about that and how Amelia is going to be causing us to lose close to a few hundred thousand jobs. or 250 million jobs in quite a few years. So, again, a couple of people put things like office space usage, and they put my – and I won't repeat the words because we are a G and a PG channel – so this is at the stage uh, that's making sure people are working like slaves to pay off the bank. And I think a lot of companies are being slave drivers. They are expecting more than what they should be getting. And you know what? They're not paying really great. We talk about minimum pay, minimum wage. Come on. They're trying to get you to do four and five jobs. That's, that's just not right. And I bet there are loads of websites out there that are devoted to this sort of thing because just these one or two companies that I found in just researching this, it's ridiculous. So, I mean, there's even, uh, there's even a thing called mouse jiggle. And they're able to detect whether someone's working based on mouse jiggle. So should they put sensors um, in their own offices? I bet you they're not. I bet you they're putting them in every single floor, but I bet you they're not getting put in the the top quadrant where the executive people are. Why? Because they're, again, trying to get control over the company and find ways to get rid of people. I think it may even be issues for them trying to get rid of people before they reach their uh, their seniority. And uh, they need to to be fired so that they don't have to pay them uh, these great, benefits like the 401k or maybe they're not fully vested and they're using every excuse of the book so they can legally quote unquote get rid of them i'm sorry ladies and gentlemen i have a big problem with this and i think it's going to be a major major issue so a lot of employees are now being required uh to wear uh certain types of uh tags there's even companies out there that um some of the elder people that are having to use the restrooms more and more they're requiring them to wear certain garments um, so that they don't need to use the restroom as often. I mean, that is just really wrong, and that's sick. Um, I, I just don't have a real comment. I just don't like where this is going. And 
you know, we saw it many years ago where we could track trucks and we could track to see if somebody was on time. And, and I get it. If somebody's not there and you have to track them, fine. But do we need to be watching that they stopped at, at, at a fast food or at a restaurant for two minutes for a soda? I really don't think so. And, you know, somebody said that uh, a, a $8 heating pad could take care of uh, fooling this system. Because remember, it is heat. So, again, people are going to try to beat this. And what are they going to do? They're going to find other ways. Maybe we're not just talking about heat sensors. Maybe they're going to install other types of sensors that are going to have to be tripped. Uh, so there has to, if one or more of them is tripped, then I know we're pretty much you know, in good shape. So I don't know uh, the best way to put it, but it, it, it's really just a little bit crazy if you ask me. And I think more and more people are just really starting to get sick of this. And this is why a lot of people, ladies and gentlemen, are leaving corporate America. Some of them are not treating them well. And again, they say the censors are going, I quote, aren't modern people or their productivity. They're assessing office space. These kiosks are designed to let employees have more time to interact with customers. The IDs are being used to help you log on to computers more quickly. And other things like Facebook is concerned about how others hate speech. And now there's massive censorship. Things like uh, Pinterest and all these other places. So we're supposed to have freedom of the speech, right? But yet, if it's something that isn't of an adult content and people want to look at that, it's still being blocked. On social media, so that's not really fair. I mean, yes, we have to block into certain age groups, but, you know, we're not five-year-olds. So this is utopian action. And, um, you know, we have something where you talk about security. You, unfortunately, have tyranny. So I, I think it's really crazy. Uh, Bloomberg has been doing this now for years, and, and they review that they have uh, – uh, you know, how long you're on the phone for, how long you're in the bathroom, how long you're at lunch, how long you're away from your keyboard. And part of the reason Bloomberg says is they never uh, ran for president. So they spy on employees, clients, as well as the abysmal records for even maternity leaves. I mean, I think this is ridiculous. This is just getting too deep and too personal. Um, it, it's, it's crazy. And this one bank needs to install sensors that watch how long their currency traders spend in chat rooms. So before you know it, London's going to be fixing everything every day for doing something. You know, it's like we're starting to get away from a democracy and more like a dictatorship. These are the slow remnants of it, ladies and gentlemen. And I think that it won't be long before even the government has these. You know, because if... Corporate America is using well, and the government's got to use them, and then they get passed. You know, the government, and you have to follow that same rule. So if you are willing to push your soul over to receive a paycheck from one of these, I can't even give you words for it, despisingly criminal corporate banks and lenders, then maybe what they're doing to monitor you shouldn't be such a big deal. You already made the decision. You've already been bought by a price. So is there a better way? Do you leave where you are? Do you start your own business? Maybe. But I think you have to just be cognizant of what's going on and realize that you're starting to become a pawn on a chessboard. And when they don't start giving you equal pay and start giving you increases for cost of living... That's a real problem. So these recently built London offices, um, they block consistently entirely of hot desks. That's what they built. So there's no cubicles. Uh, you turn up with basically your, your laptop in hand, and uh, you're at the bank, and they have phones. They have network ports, and that's it. You come to work with your laptop. They have a kitchen area, a quiet room for walking in and for bookings. And the staffs have the option to work from home or the odd month or two in a year since it makes no difference they're in the office or not. But the real concern is, is there a complete um, pullback or a disassembly of teamwork and iterative actions because of what's going on? Are we starting to lose the um, 
I want to say the camaraderie, but also that team that everyone works so hard to build, and now it's kind of being torn apart. You know, a lot of companies spend money to take people on these great, expensive team-building retreat weekends. And now when you do some crap like this, come on. Really. I, I, I don't have too much respect for this bank. So it's definitely a big issue, and uh, it, it, it's a problem. You know, people say, you know, they're going to go into work tomorrow, and uh, they're going to resign on the basis of similar workspace, which – it's going to happen. And there are a group of people online now that are starting some forums to basically boycott places that are doing this. I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if unions, okay, because you know how, how strict unions are. You, you don't give them the right kind of benefits, and they're, they're knocking down your door because you didn't give them five cents. Now, I'm not saying sometimes they're not warranted. I'm saying that they really do fight when there's something for their workers, and uh, it's a problem. It's really, really a serious, serious problem. So I don't know what to tell you, but all I can say is that this is Big Brother. And remember I told you that it's not the data itself that's the problem. It's how we choose to use the data and interpolate or extract the data. So Big Brother has basically arrived at this bank. And um, this investment bank in London has these sensors, and they're tracking desk time. This bank installed these black boxes under the worker's desk without even notifying them, even though corporate and the executive said they were going to notify them. That was just to satisfy the PR, basically. How much time are they spending at their desk? I mean, come on. Don't, doesn't the executive team have anything better to do than to figure out what other people are doing? Why don't they do some work, for crying out loud? Why are they so into worrying about what everybody else is doing in their company? They're probably doing more work than the executives are doing. And I have to make another quote. According to Bloomberg, the, uh, they've notified the union and the staff before phasing in the sensor installation. But workers claim they don't remember being informed, and they felt their whereabouts and productivity were being traced. So they claim they did it. They're trying to cover their butts, or CYA. They said that they sent a staff memo. The bank, of course, no, no surprise, denied this claim and said that the censors were a cost-saving measure. Yeah, give me a break. To examine the use of office space in a limit less occupied areas so that we could reduce consumption of power. Give me a break. Bloomberg, and I quote, also said... More investments, banks are using sensors to track how much time analysts, traders, and salespeople are spending with clients, and the sensors are now causing a controversy in the financial industry, close quote. So this is happening in the financial industry. What's the next biggest industry? We all think medical is the most important industry. Well, I have news for you, ladies and gentlemen. It's not medical. It's financial. Do you know if something goes wrong, the higher priority for most High-level systems is to get the financial network up first before they get the medical network up front first. Something's wrong with that picture. We're going to worry about whether they can pay for something before we worry about keeping somebody alive. I think some people's priorities are, are messed up. And um, I don't know. I think something big has to happen before – these banks and these other institutions, I hope that a lot of this negative feedback that's coming in is going to demotivate other company industries, such as medical, etc., from trying to do something like this. I, I think that's what we're talking about. I really do. And this techno craze is being shown to make such a great big deal but the employees are feeling like they're chained to their desks for fear of negative performance reviews because they could be gone if they're away too much or they go to the bathroom more than once or twice. They're not physically chained there, but they have that psychological connection in their brain that they are. 
Last one, uh, month, the uh, Wisconsin company called, and I'm going to give you the name here, Three Square Market. And they became the first company in the U.S. to offer microchip implants to its employees. This company designed software for break room markets, and they want employees to use microchips to help facilitate vending machines. Come on, people. Come on. You're doing something to say you're making life easier for somebody, but you know in the back of your mind that that chip is not being there so you can help people uh, get vented. No, it's going to be there so you can track them. Come on. Come on. Let's really be, let's be realistic about this, okay? The firm want to use its employees as test subjects for the product. And although the program was voluntarily, um, you know, there was no major requirements on it, it made people very uncomfortable in the beginning of a trend that could maybe someday result in humans being involuntary microchipped. That's, that's not right. So companies are escalating efforts to monitor employees. That's no shock. And this bank installs the devices at their headquarters, and they track how much time they're away from their desks. The devices, I told you, were manufactured by Oc Occupy, and they use a heat and motion sensor to record how long employees are spending at their post. So they're using heat and motion. Uh, not to get into security here, but when you have um, security detection devices like um, motion detectors, there are basic ones that just track motion, and they can fail, like if it's a cat or pet. So then they have others where they can do, like, infrared and motion. That's two. Then they have infrared, heat, and microwave. So they're able to detect heat, motion, and movement and make sure that they're all within a succinct couple se a second or so. And if they are, then that, that the processor on board results and says, okay, this is a fault. It's an alarm. We're going to trip the circuit. If they just get one but not the other – and it's so many seconds where the other one hits, or maybe so many minutes, then they're going to wait for the other one. They want to make sure because they have to get the other ones boom, boom, boom. And they usually will be right after the other as long as it's truly something that is tripping it like a human being. So this just makes me think, where is our world going? And what is all the purpose about this? Is it... Is it to cut expenses for, you know, trying to get rid of people because now they're afraid because they can't fire people? I got to tell you something. Bloomberg News reached out to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten banks. And they don't currently use any kind of desk monitoring. There was one bank they reached out to. Who does? There were um, two ba well, actually two banks, uh, three banks, excuse me, that did not want to respond to the request or comment about will they be implementing something. Now, when you don't want to answer a comment, okay, first rule of thumb, ladies and gentlemen, if you're in court and you don't want to answer something and you're before someone, the first thing they always say is never admit you did anything. But if you don't want to answer something, Okay, or you've got to pause or not say something. If you didn't do something, you're going to be right away to just say, I didn't do it, and the whole nine yards why you didn't do it. But if you did do something, you're just going to be keeping quiet. So I have to believe that three of these big banks here in the U.S. that are in New York, shame on them. Because I think we're going to be reading about them in the next three to 12 months that they're doing something similar. I mean, let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, banks are all about numbers, okay? They're all about statistics. Everything is a statistic. They quantify you before they're going to decide whether they're going to lend to you. It's not about a personal relationship anymore. It's about what's your credit score, what you're in, what you're out. They don't look about the personal business, what's happening, your good, good relations. They don't care about any of that stuff, ladies and gentlemen. They really don't care. They are a bank. And they are operating like these big corporate banks. You might have gone to some of these small banks. And uh, they might fudge the rules a little bit. But even now, they're not really doing that. They're not really fudging the rules. But you go to some of these, these larger banks or even these regional banks, 
their corporation head office makes all the rules. And when they find that their branches aren't following them, oh, ho, 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 they get right on them. And they let them know in no uncertain terms that they do that again, that that's going to go against their file. And they do it again, they may get fired. So I think, ladies and gentlemen, there is a, a lot of controversy on this topic. I'm sure you can agree with me. But the question is, will more book, will, will more companies will, will more companies be installing heat sensors? Will more companies be installing desk heat sensors? I don't know. I have to tell you something. There's another bank in New York, okay? And although they didn't install heat sensors, okay? Remember I said to you, sometimes you can lie by omission. <laughs> they say it's not lying, but really technically it is. So is your boss tracking you? Firms are becoming more creepy with hidden sensors to monitor every move around the office. So devices can be hidden under your desk or even in light fittings. Firms are using sensors. Um, there is one big one out there that does audits, an accounting company, and there's another one out of Boston. I'm not going to give you their name. But a lot of legal experts are saying that employers can legally track you everywhere in the office, except not in the restrooms. Yeah, I know that's really comforting. But if you think right now, ladies and gentlemen, okay, that your boss is basically oblivious to when you're having a laissez-faire day, you may want to check for the hidden devices in your office because they probably know more about you, ladies and gentlemen, than you may be knowing about your own work. And I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I, I think that is, I think that is really, really scary. I think it's really scary uh, about that, and um, it, it's, it's, it's starting to panic people. And um, you know, there's so many people out there that are trying to say, even the CEOs of the firms, that you know, it's good, it's going to help save money. There is a firm that had installed a thousand sensors, which are the same size as five pence coins within light fixtures, and they detect motion and daylight. So when it's light out, they detect if, if basically uh, the light, and then they can take the day. So this way they can tell when people are working hours, they can tell people working off hours, and they can take all this data in just a few clicks, and they can easily see what's going on. What is it? It's putting businesses under a microscope. Do you know... Hitachi actually created something. They call it the Hitachi Business Microscope. It contains a microphone and sensors that can track, can, can track how you interact with your employees. The Hitachi Business Microscope. I... I, I don't even know how to respond to that. I don't know how to respond to it. Keep employees productive is a big challenge, but now we're actually checking up on them. There's one company in Boston that's actually outfit 100 employees with badges and microphone location sensors they actually wear on them. They're made by a company called Humanize, and these badges track physical and verbal interactions with the firm, hoping to see how office-defined affects employee communication. Baloney. Baloney, ladies and gentlemen. Baloney. You're going to see more of this, okay? And um, it may be hard to understand uh, this technology before a lot of the big corporations and the governments um, say this should be coming forward. I, I I just feel that it's just it's changing our world. And it's it's a scary thing. 
There were companies years ago that you'd, you'd work for a small company, and the president would sit back in the office. They'd watch everyone on camera, and they'd monitor everyone, their computer activity in real time, and then they'd have phones tap for listening, recording things. But they'd mention things that were discussed amongst employees. Things are supposed to be just between employees, and they took that. So that means, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say this to you very importantly. If you're in an office setting, I don't care if you're in the cafeteria, if you're in your office building and you think you're having a confidential conversation, whether it's about something personal with you, love life, relations, or your job, a client, anything, and you're in your office, I can tell you, I can almost promise you, there's a very high probability that somebody else is listening to your conversation. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, but what I'm trying to tell you is don't presume that because you're in a closed office door and you've locked it and you've got the blinds down that no one's listening. Offices are becoming more and more volatile. Bosses are sneaking up and standing behind you to watch and scare you to make sure you're actually doing your work. I think that's abusive. I really do. A lot of bosses will follow the trail of breadcrumbs to find out what you're doing, what you're working on. People wake up, employers, all the time. But if they don't get on the ball fast and understand that what they're doing, ladies and gentlemen, you hear me say this time and time again, technology is great when it's used as a tool to help. If it was being used to help and to conserve resources, fine, it's a tool. When it's used to abuse or manipulate people or blackmail people, it's a weapon that can be used, that's being used for bad. So I think the decision on whether to do something in technology ultimately relies on our conscience. That's really the name of the game. And we're going to have to be accountable because now, someday, this is going to come back to us if we're still the head of that company or what have you. So what's new in smart building technology? Occupancy sensors. Corporate workplace is changing before our eyes. And it was supposed to be put there to turn off lights. And I agree, it's great for that. But I think we're starting to abuse it a little bit. And, and workplace sensors are starting to be built into buildings. Now that's fine. For buildings and for areas, but not for freaking desks. Not for freaking desks. I get occupancy sensors for hospitals, for even homes or public places so you could turn off lights like in gyms or spas. I get it. But that's what they're used for. Nothing else. What utilization data is being stored? Who is getting the data? Who is it being shared with? And what are we doing with that data? What kind of decisions are we making with that data? So smart lighting is popular smart building technology that turns lights on off based on occupancy. Not a big deal. That really tracks utilization. There's facial people recognition using specialized cameras that process images in real time to count the number of people in a space. But they do not record the images. They just want to know the people so they know the heat. And that makes sense. I get it. But when we start to use the technology to drill too deep, it's kind of like we're crossing the line and we're going below the belt without permission. And there's low energy things like the low energy Bluetooth eye beacon that's now starting to surface. Use existing smartphone technology to provide more accurate indoor positioning, uh, such as traditional Wi-Fi. Making sense of these technologies and deciding for you what seems to be overwhelming can be a little challenging and daunting at times, but this is where we're going. And then we get into things like wind versus wireless. Wireless occupant sensors are easy. They're less expensive to install. Okay? But keep in mind that wireless sensors um, require batteries for power. So wired uh, versus wireless. Real-time data accuracy is important for a lot of people. Precision. Communicating with the cloud. APIs. Battery life. Physical features. HVAC is what brought all this on. And we could thank things like uh, Alexa and stuff like that. 
But that's where all this is coming from. I mean, all these devices now, it's like if it's Bluetooth enabled, it can be talking, or if it's part of your Wi-Fi network, it can now be Alexa control. Alexa can even make phone calls on your phone if you allow her to. Are we that lazy that we can't pick up our phone? I mean, are we? Or do we just want everything done for us? I, I like to exercise, and I like doing certain things. And I think there are companies out there that are becoming, let's say, understanding of the moral responsibility that needs to be in place when these things are being put in place. Because uh, offices of the future are going to have sensors, and they may track your every move. Objects will be able to talk to each other, locate staff, let you know where they are. So the days of you picking the phone and saying, you know, Bob, call extension 305. You just look on the grid. Oh, Bob's, uh, he's walking down the aisle upstairs. I'll just go catch him. I don't know about you, but I think that's a little creepy. Yes, you did plan to bump into him, but that's just a little creepy. And I almost consider that on the line of stalking because you're gathering data the other person doesn't know. And you're really causing a surprise. You're really causing a surprise. And with BigQuery and, and all these other Google products and the fact that it can be scaled, there's so much happening, ladies and gentlemen. But listen, it looks like we are almost out of time. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's show. Please be sure to check back our website in about an hour where you can see a lot of the enriching information that I've posted for some things that you may choose to purchase on the types of information so that you can enrich that foundation. Have yourself a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you next Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. to thank you for listening and invite you to join us again next Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Be sure to tell your friends, colleagues, and associates about the J. Moore Tech Talk Show. We're here every Thursday night on the Starcom Radio Network at 9 p.m. Eastern. If you missed any of our shows, you can just walk on over to jmor.com, click on social, and then under J. Moore Radio, just click on previously recorded episodes. We'll see you next Thursday night at 9 p.m. Have a great week.